coconut oil, the stuff which can be uh, milk from coconuts, can be used for various things, mostly hair products and skin stuff, I hear so. I don't know, I'm a dude, I use it so. But recently I've been meddling with a lot of experiments in terms of how to extract things, you know, the norm. And I've stumbled upon a way how to make glycerin out of this stuff. So yeah, glycerin today. Now what is glycerin? Glycerin, or glycerol, or ch tu ah ch tu ah What the hell was that? Must be the Benadryl. It's basically what water would be if water were organic and weird. No, that's a terrible description. It's more like an organic molecule, which is liquid at room temperature, which I already admire, and can be used for a solvent for things. Organic and inorganic. Like, for example, I can dissolve st just regular table, table salt in this. Like, here, take a look at its structure right here. As you can see, there's a lot of OH groups on it. So, yeah, that's fun. Anyway, yeah, let's begin. So I was going to go to the ocean to get salt, but as you can see, the ocean is frozen over because of the damn Canadian climate. But, because the ocean, I just showed, is just a local pond, there's no salt in it. So, Walmart will have to suffice. So yeah, I bought the salt, and I'm going to convert this into sodium hydroxide. So yeah, I did show how I do this before in another video, so I'm just pouring salt in, and while I'm pouring it in, I'm mixing it. I need these solutions of water as concentrated as possible with salt. So a quick summary of how I use this electrolyzer. So I get a piece of cotton, put it in the tube between the sections. Afterwards, yeah, the cotton just thick enough so it covers the passageway between. Because otherwise it would just add resistance. Afterwards, I just add water to both of these sides. And after I added the water to both sides, I'm going to put a piece of copper in the... Um, negative side and a piece of aluminum on the positive side. Next I'm just going to plug in the um, electricity to both of these sides, um, negative on the copper, positive on the aluminum, because that makes the effect increase and perfect. So now sodium ion should flow here, make sodium hydroxide. Over here, the chlorine atom should flow to and make chlorine gas and aluminum chloride. And over time, this will make sodium hydroxide. So I put a little more cotton inside of this tube, and now I'm going to wait for this thing to electrolyze more and more. I'm going to wait for about a day. The more you wait, the merrier, the more sodium hydroxide concentration comes on this side. And you can see that the process is really happening from the hydrogen bubbles rising up on the negative side. If you have hydrogen bubbles on the negative side, it's working. And um, yeah, I'm just gonna leave this thing like this for maybe a day and then I'm gonna get back to you on end. By the way, the voltage doesn't really matter for this thing. Just make sure that the current isn't too high so that it overheats inside of this tube and melts and then the whole thing spills out and then I have to deal with the spill. So yeah, in a day, see ya. One day later. So I've kept this up for about a day, constantly replacing the anode on the right side, because the anode, made of aluminum, kept getting eaten by all the chlorine ions. And I think I've actually managed to get a leaky tube and melt, and the whole thing spills out and then have to do with it. I might have just destroyed the table. Alright, so yeah, now that the process has been going on for a while, I'll just pour this stuff out into cups now. So yeah, now I'm just gonna pour this out. Nice and easy, and this does not look good. I might have just trashed the table. This is what happens when you pour sodium hydroxide onto the table. I genuinely just have trashed the table. This is not coming off. Ugh. Um, help me get a table fund? Yeah, not even rubbing alcohol. Oh, that's your first-hand experience of what happens when you pour sodium hydroxide on a table. Um, don't, don't make the same mistake as me, kids. A little while later. Alright, so yeah, now I'm just gonna boil it. And this time, my plan is to get rid of all the water completely. Well, eventually. 
cooking this thing, medium heat and stuff. And yeah, now I'm just gonna wait until there's hardly any more water inside of it. You see, I didn't boil all of the water off in my sodium hydroxide video because then the sodium hydroxide and the salt would have erupted everywhere and it would have been incredibly messy. Like my kitchen would have been covered in sodium hydroxide. Ugh. So yeah, and, um, I'm just gonna wait until like there's hardly any more water left inside of this pot and I'll get back to you by then. While this thing is acting as a humidifier for the house, you'll notice how there's some debris at the bottom. That's basically whatever broke off of the cotton and the copper hydroxide, which has produced this byproduct. It's safe to keep though, it won't hurt the reaction, and we'll get rid of it eventually. So yeah, I'm just gonna keep it. So now that there's hardly any more water left, I'm gonna get the coconut oil out. And I'm going to get a few spoonfuls of this stuff. You don't need much because, well, not much sodium hydroxide was produced. I'm just gonna dump the coconut oil into here. Theoretically, you can use just about any oil for this. I'm just using coconut because it melts at slightly above 24 degrees. So yeah, no, you can use everything. Well, maybe not like motor oil or, motor oil or baby oil. So sorry, Teddy, but yeah, no, any cooking oil already works. So I'm using coconut oil because its melting point is just slightly higher than room temperature. So once the reaction will be complete, it will be very easy to separate from the glycerin. Um, its melting temperature is slightly higher than the room temperature unless you're like in the Sahara Desert or something, which at that point you can use any oil to the same effectivity. Everything that's boiling is just water, which is boiling off the remaining water. Coconut oil is just fine and happy dandy being as a liquid because it boils at temperatures above 200 degrees. So yeah, that's just water boiling off right now. So yeah, very soon it will stop boiling and then the reaction will actually commence. If you look at this thing now, we can see that the boiling has stopped and the temperature is now over 133 degrees Celsius. So there's no more water inside of it, just molten coconut oil with salt and sodium hydroxide inside of it right now. So yeah, um, according to Google, saponification occurs at 70 degrees, but knowing chemistry, I'm gonna say screw that and I'm gonna keep it at 140 degrees because it should have more energy to activate the reaction. So now I'm just gonna decrease the temperature a little bit and keep this thing heated at over 100 degrees Celsius for a while. So essentially what's happening now, while we wait for this thing to react, essentially what's happening now, we have oil, which is just carbon, 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 bonded to hydrogens around it. And to each of these carbons, we have a carboxylic acid bondage to it. So yeah, it looks something like, um, this and afterwards we have a long carbon chain. This is how a basic oil structure works. Next, we get sodium hydroxide here, which is sodium bonded to an oxygen bonded to a hydrogen. And afterwards, this thing is just a base. So it obviously wants to react with the acid more than just any other carbon. It wants to react more with the acid than any carbon chain does. So so this acid thing, um, it prefers the sodium and in exchange, it gives the sodium hydroxide. So after the this thing gets attracted to this and the sodium hydroxide, it gets pushed over here, it gets abandoned by the sodium to this thing. So afterwards we get the, just a carbon chain same thing as this, this part gets un left untouched. But however, because this thing has left, sodium has taken it, and sodium has, through this thing as a substitution, we get a structure which looks like this. This is what glycerin looks like. And as well as that, we get a sodium chain as well. We get a sodium with the base of an acid. This is what soap is. So this is the reaction which is currently happening inside of here right now. So we've let this thing sit here for several hours while maintaining a temperature of slightly higher than 140 degrees Celsius. And it has become brown. That's basically all the coconut oil which has just melted off. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna um, turn this thing off and I'm basically just gonna strain it with a regular, uh, with regular coffee filter. So, um, yeah, I'm just gonna pass this mixture through here and everything solid will be caught up by the filter and everything liquid will pass through. 
The only liquid parts which should be left is the glycerin and the um, molten coconut oil. Whereas the solids, which are caught, is just soap and salt. Because coconut soap boils at temperatures higher than 140 degrees. So yeah, now I'm just going to wait for this thing, for this mixture to cool down. This is a mixture of glycerin and um, mostly... Yeah, mostly molten coconut oil and some glycerin. I'm just going to wait for this thing to cool down. And we're going to work from there then. Now that the process is complete and I actually washed the pot, I noticed that it's the most clean it's been in ages. So, yeah, I guess you can clean your pots this Okay, way. now that it's cooled down a bit, I am just going to really just pour this into a tall container which can hold all of the liquid in for everything to separate smoothly in. So most of the liquid is just molten coconut oil, but at the very bottom, I should start seeing some glycerin forming. So this thing was filtered several more times to remove anything solid from it, the soap and the salt which were in it. And now I have a mixture of molten coconut oil, which is a little bit burnt, and at the very bottom, salt and supposedly molten glycerin. So I'll just pour the excess out into this cup, which I drank off which I drank out of this morning. And if you look here, you can see how there's a bit of liquid at the bottom. I'll pour the non-glycerin out as much as I can. And I'll wait for this thing to um, settle down so I can pour it into a smaller container. I can't put this down the bottom. So now that I've poured most of the coconut oil out, I'm just going to pour the remaining into this container. It needs to be completely dry because glycerin looks just like water. So after pouring the mixture out into this flask, we have this brown liquid, which is molten coconut oil, and at the very bottom, some white stuff. The white stuff, however, seems to move quite easily when I shake it. From therefore, we can conclude that it's not salt, it's... only transparent white liquid which is not mixable with coconut oil is theoretically glycerin because all of the water was boiled off during the um, keeping it at 130 degrees Celsius and so, yeah the only white liquid which should be in here is still glycerin and now I'm just gonna put a copper mesh inside of it and then put it inside of the fridge So I kept it in the fridge for a while, and oh, the coconut oil has frozen, whereas the glycerin has also frozen. However, I let it melt a little bit and heat it up to, I'd say like 20 degrees, maybe a little below room temperature. And the coconut oil is still frozen, whereas the glycerin is a liquid. So now I'm just going to get the copper thing, and I'm going to pull this out to pull all the um, coconut oil out. And now that I've made an opening, I am going to just um, pour the liquid out of here. And all the solids will remain inside of here. Whereas all of the liquid, all of the liquid glycerin, will leak right out. And this is the result. I got a murky white looking liquid, full, nice and full of impurities and all of the um, salt and contaminations in the world. And this should theoretically be glycerin. And that's it for this video. See you guys.